So welcome along ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, any other hairy mammals, arachnids or vertebrates that are interested in today's video about fork servicing. So here we are back in the workshop. Another short technical video today. Today we are looking at Bob Dobolina's Triumph 675 upside down forks. So Bob has complained that the fork seals are weeping as we can see here. But he's also complained that the ride is very harsh and crashy and doesn't inspire any confidence in the front end of the motorcycle at all. So we're actually going to modify these slightly. So let's go through what we're going to need and what we're going to be using. So we need a few pieces of rag, obviously a cup of tea to be working with, two bottles of nice whiskey. Now it's important to have two because we've got two suspension legs. If it goes wrong at any point, you've got one for each suspension leg to drink but also when it does go successfully, you've also got a bottle to drink after each suspension leg. Obviously, you're not gonna be drinking this whilst you're doing the repairs or before you go out for the test ride, but it's there as an important part of the tooling. We've got the new seals, some brake cleaners and some WD-40. This is just a piece of an old milk carton that has been cut out and you'll see what that's for. A fork seal driver, this is a universal one, which for occasional use is plenty good enough. A selection of hand tools that we're going to be using throughout the job. Uh, a steel rule or a vernier caliper gauge for measuring the fork oil height. Potentially a syringe to measure the oil quantity correctly. A jug, some fork oil, some rubber grease and I've also got this bamboo cane which I use to clean out the inside of the fork leg as it's a nice long reach and this homemade fork spring compressor. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> which is just a scaffold bar with some mild steel that has been bent and bolted together and a few nuts, bolts and washers. So you'll see how this operates. This is the Mark I version at the minute. We will be tidying that up and modifying it slightly in the future. But for this job, it should work perfectly fine. So most importantly, before we start, is to get yourself a pen and a piece of paper. We've got on here our torque settings that we know. We've also got the stock oil level of, uh, or quantity of 495 millimeters with a 72 mil air gap and a 10 weight of oil. So what we're actually gonna do here is modify that to roughly 460 milliliters of oil with a 100 mil air gap and a five weight of oil. So that is gonna be a lighter weight of oil with a bigger air gap. So hopefully not quite as harsh a ride. If he tries this and this is still not giving him the confidence he wants, we can also change this air gap and change to a seven and a half oil but we'll see how this goes hopefully this will be good enough the suspension also hasn't been set up to bob yet so we will be doing that once we put the forks back in the bike so standard i've just gone through and checked where all the clickers and everything are so before we took them out of the bike we've got a fork height of four mil the preload is 10 turns out the rebound is five clicks out and the compression is six clicks out so this is how it's been set before we've touched anything that's important to do in case you want to put it back to exactly where it was. It's quite simple. Just get the screwdriver spanners and just turn it all the way out from where it is and you'll find out how many clicks or turns it is. So most importantly, before we remove the forks from the bike, we must loosen this top cap here with this big nut. Otherwise you're going to struggle to grip the fork leg itself and undo that nut. So that nut has already been cracked off in the bike. And now we can start the disassembly. So first job up, we've got the fork leg actually held into the wheel clamp on the bike ramp, just so that I've got two hands to try and show you this guys properly. First thing we need to do is unwind the preload adjuster. So the preload adjuster will be tensioning or preloading the spring inside the tube. If we leave it wound all the way in, it's gonna make it have more force when we take this top cap off. So we need to unwind this preload adjuster here, the gold part, all the way out. So the spring has got the least tension on it before we remove the top cap. There we go. So now we've unwound the preload adjuster all the way out. 
the fork was held with the outside tube, now it's just being held with the bottom so the top will move. We need to take this top cap off. Like I've said previously, this was cracked off whilst the fork was in the bike at Bob's house. So now it's quite easy to just unwind it. Top tip when we're doing this is to try and keep a little bit of downward pressure on it, just to make sure the threads aren't catching as it's unscrewing. And also if there is any preload left in the spring, it will stop it pinging up and hitting you in the face. As you can see, this one hasn't got any preload in it at all. It's nice. So now we've got it out like that. My next step is always to drain the oil so that I can check how much oil was in there roughly and the quality of the oil. Okay, so that's most of the oil out of there. And actually the oil looks in quite good quality, to be honest. Um, it's not bad, it's not very dark. And there's about 500 mil in there. Obviously there's still a little bit inside the damper rod as well, so it's not the full amount. But I would say that's had a, a fork oil change fairly recently. So these are actually cartridge forks where the whole damper rod assembly will come out as one cartridge. So all we need to do now to actually separate the fork is undo the retaining banjo allen key bolt in the bottom of the fork leg up through the bottom. Remove that. Now this is a dirty job, you will get oil everywhere, hence why we've got these spill mats down to try and collect a lot of the residual oil. No matter how much you try and drain it, there will always be bits of oil everywhere. Allen key bolt's playing hardball. There he is. So we've got the Allen key banjo bolt out now. Now that should allow us to just completely separate or pull the damper rod and spring assembly out of the fork leg. As so, we can now separate the fork tube, inner and outer. So we now have our forks apart. If we just wanted to do an oil seal and a fork oil change service, this is as far as we'd need to strip these forks apart. We could now quite easily pop these seals out, clean the shaft up, new seals, new oil, etc. But because we need to measure the quantity of oil in this tube, we do actually need to take the spring off of this damper rod assembly. We can also fully replace the oil in the damper rod and bleed that out. So you're doing a far more effective oil change. So whilst we've got it like this, let's clean the bottom of this fork leg up. You can see where that seal has been leaking. There's a slight bit of pitting right on the bottom of that fork leg. So we need to get rid of that so it doesn't catch any of the new seals and then assess the condition of the chrome finish on there. So what we're going to use is some very fine 3000 wet and dry paper and a little bit of WD-40 just to give it a bit of lubrication. And just gently in up and down motion so you're going in the same direction travel as the fork. Very light pressure and we're just trying to remove that surface pissing marks on there. Tends to only ever happen around the inside of the fork leg where the mud guard on the wheel is because when people clean their bikes, they don't take the wheel out and actually get right in there to clean all that area up. So we've given that a good clean up with the 3000 wet and dry. Give her a wipe off and have a little look. 
now we can see surface corrosion has all gone. There are a few slightly deeper pitted marks in the chrome finish but we've rubbed them back to the point where if you run in your nail over them you can't actually feel them on the surface you can only see them so hopefully that's enough to stop that damaging the new seal at all. This is probably what caused the seal to fail in the first place a little bit of corrosion around on the inner leg as the seal has gone down over it it's damaged the seal and then it started weeping if this is beyond repair then unfortunately you're going to have to get a new chrome fork leg um, or get it re-chromed, re-plated. But hopefully this one will be okay. So now the fork legs sorted, we're going to take the seals out of the outer leg and for this we we'll just use a nice flat bladed screwdriver or pry bar or this is actually a proper scraper so it's nice and wide blade on it and be careful just get it in between the seal and the fork leg. A little bit of pressure while I was twisting and it should just pop the seal out like that. So this is the dust seal at the top. Inside we've just got the spring clip which we can remove using a flat headed screwdriver. Sometimes if the seal has been allowing water past they can get rusty and actually corrode in there and can be a little bit tricky to remove on this occasion it's quite nice and clean and fresh now when you're removing these components from the fork I always think it's a good idea to lay them out as they come out facing upwards so that's the way the seal goes into the fork there's your clip you've now got your oil seal underneath that which we should be able to pry out with a small screwdriver or pry bar, it shouldn't be too tight in there. And now we have our fork leg with the washer in there. We need to make sure that is put back in the same way as it is actually slightly different on each face. So again, we'll put that back in with the top side facing upwards. Now we've got the fork tube empty, we can see in there we've got our bush which we can inspect. I can see already that bush is absolutely perfect, no problem with that. Uh, we can clean all of our fork leg out and we can reassemble it and put new seals on. But as I say, we are actually going to be removing the spring and pumping the damper rod out and measuring all the oil levels. So for that we need to sort of reassemble part of it so that we can compress the spring. So here we've just reassembled the damper rod inside the torque tube without the outer tube on. Put the banjo bolt back in to stop an oil leaking out and now we can set this up in our homemade spring compressor. Okay so here we have it. The fork leg is in this spring compressor, this weird contraption. So it's a scaffold pole bolted in the vise and then just some mild steel bar that's been bent into a shape. So we've got it hinged through the scaffold bar there as a fulcrum point, and then we've just got a bolt with a couple of lock nuts on, which actually wind through and attach into the holes into the preload spacer. So it's cable tied on the bottom there to stop the bottom of the forklift coming out, and we should be able to see now, as we operate this, it will compress the spring allowing us to gain access to the lock nut down here and undo the fork cap itself. So a little bit tricky and awkward on your own, but I'm sure we'll be able to make it.
And just like that, we've taken the top cap away from the damper assembly. So now we can remove it from the spring compressor. Before I back it off fully, I'll just show you guys how those bolts just sit inside that preload adjuster there, preload spacer. So now back up here on the bench, we can again remove this lower damper rod, uh, banjo bolt. We didn't need to refit that, but really it's there just to stop the oil whittling all over the floor and to hold the cartridge in place whilst we compress the spring. Like we say, that spring compressor is the Mark I version. I do want to make a few modifications to it, uh, i.e. welding the nuts on where the bolts go through so that you haven't got to have two lock nuts, but that's a job for another day. So now we've got our spring preload spacer, which goes in, again, keeping everything in order. We've got our coil spring, and we should have in here the damper rod itself separately. There we have it. We'll pull the internal part of the damper rod out. And there we have the fork fully disassembled. So now it's a question of cleaning everything up, making sure it's all spotless, getting as much old oil out as we can, and then we can refit with new seals and we'll show you how to measure the oil level. So at this point, folks, this is where the special Odin's bamboo stick comes in. It's an official Odin's tool. Uh, what I like to use this for is so you can get right inside the springs, like so. And the same with the fork tube. That allows you to get everything meticulously clean before reassembly. As you're cleaning this top cap up, just have a good inspection of the threads around the top cap and the quality and condition of the O-ring. And if necessary, replace. They don't often split, but you don't want to go to all this effort and then have to replace the O-ring at a later date. So as with any job like this, guys, it's not just a question of cleaning it to make it look pretty, you're cleaning it to inspect it. You're looking for any small defects, cracks, anything that could cause potential damage or the root cause of the failure in the first place. So we think we've identified that on this one. However, we will still fully inspect it as we're cleaning it up. Now we can fully empty the damper rod and you can see if we didn't disassemble the fork you would never be able to get all that old oil out of the internals of the damper. So if you've got particularly grubby oil or in this case we're changing the oil to try and give it a different ride, if you didn't do this you're basically got zero effectiveness on what you're attempting to do. So with this job, we have actually got new copper washers to put on the lower banjo bolt. However, a little tip for you, if you haven't got these copper washers, just using a long pair of pliers and some heat, we can actually anneal the copper washer itself. So 
With this, I'm just going to show you using this blowtorch here. However, if you've only got access to a gas hob or the likes of that, it does the same process. So all we're doing is we're holding it into the flame until we basically get it somewhere between sort of 650 and 1000 degrees Celsius. Um, at that point, the copper should glow red, cherry red. And what's happening there is it's actually changing the structure of the copper and making it soft and malleable again to use. Uh, don't, or I've always been told, not to quench copper after it's been annealed as you can actually end up tempering it, which will make it harder. So we just put a bit of heat on, like I say, if you have to take it indoors, do it on the gas hob whilst the wife's out. Don't let her catch you at it. But we just get it glowing red hot and then take the heat away. And there we can see, it's glowing red hot, and we will just let that cool on its own. So now everything's clean and ready to go back together, let's get the fork leg set back up in the wheel jock and get some new fresh seals on there. So here we are, ready to fit the new seals. We've got the two new seals, a dust seal and the oil seal. Dust seal goes down first, oil seal second, and we've got ourselves a pot of red rubber grease, which is handily labelled on the front of it, just in case you forget what it is once you've opened up the pot and mistake it for strawberry jam. So we're just going to take a little bit of this rubber grease. Like we say, the oil seal, uh, sorry, the dust seal is the first one. So we just, on the inside of it, liberally coat that with some red rubber grease just to help it slide down the shaft, like so. Now, because we have to fit this that way round, what we don't want to do is just push it on and fold that seal inside out. So that is where our piece of milk carton comes in handy. So here we have a section of milk carton cut out and this has just been coated in some of the rubber grease. So what we can do is use this around the fork leg and twist it into a conical shape so it is thinner at the top, like so. And then we can put the seal over that and use that to guide it down onto the shaft without damaging the seal. Just like so. And then you've got a nice new all, uh, dust seal on the fork leg without damaging it. Same process for the oil seal. A little bit of strawberry jam. Round the seal. Again, making sure we get the orientation right, obviously. Get our piece of milk carton. Wrap it around the fork leg, make it a conical shape, like so. Slide the seal down. Now we say a bit of a a slippery rigmarole, but it does stop you from damaging these seals, so it's worth doing. And then we have our new oil seals on. We can just wipe off any excess grease that's helped us to get it on and slide the seals all the way down to the bottom of the shaft, like so. So now we can take our outer fork tube. Again, we've checked with the bushing in there, we're happy with that, and we can mount that into our wheel chock, nice and square, just nipping out. We don't want to distort the tube of the fork leg at all. Not forgetting our spacing washer. Make sure that goes in. Then we can slip the inner leg straight down and get ready to drive the oil seal back home into its recess. 
So this is where we're now going to use the fork seal driver. So this is a universal fork seal driver. It's not great, but for the occasional use, it's not bad. So we just need to set these up so that they clip around the shaft and fit onto the seal like so. so. Here we can see the fork seal driver is nicely fitted in. We can pop the fork seal driver weight around, lift our leg up to give us a little bit more space, and then we can simply drive the seal in using nice, swift, positive motion. Take this apart and have a look. And there we can see on the inside, we can clearly see the recess for the spring. So we know the fork seal is driven down low enough. We can then take our retaining clip, pop the retaining clip in. Again, making sure it's seated in that, that recess all the way around. And then it is just the dust seal, which you should be able to push in by hand, just like that. And there we have it, the inner and the outer fork leg are back together with the new seals in. Now we just need to rebuild the rest of the fork. So if we compress it fully, we now need to install the damper rod. So now the damper rod can go in with its new or annealed copper washer and banjo bolt. Now this particular rod's got flats on the bottom which locate with flats in the bottom of the fork leg. So it locks it so that you can torque the banjo bolt effectively. Some fork legs you require a special tool to slide down and actually hold the damper cartridge as you're torquing this lower bolt up. So we're slipping it in. Line it up, pop our banjo bolt and washer in. Finger tight, and then we should talk this up. Now you can insert your internal damper rod. And now we're ready with the seals in and the banjo sealing bolt in to set our oil levels. Let's get it back in the wheel chock. So we're now ready to fill it up with some new oil. So like we said, we're changing this and adjusting it but we know roughly 465, 470 millilitres of oil. So in this measuring jug here, we're gonna pour this fresh fork oil. Now, don't be tempted to swap this out for a good quality olive oil or a white wine vinegar, anything like that, as you do need to use a good quality fork oil in there to get the best performance out of the forks. So here we've got roughly 470 mil of fluid. So we're going to pop that into the fork tube. And pour it in nice and gently, stop anything overflowing. And now all the oil is sat in the fork tube. Now we need to prime the damper rod, which I don't have the special tool to actually screw onto the damper rod thread and activate up and down. So we're just gonna use some long nose pliers on the nut, being very careful not to damage any of the damper rod thread. Um, I haven't done enough of these cartridge forks to warrant buying one of the tools yet, but it is something to uh, invest in for the future, definitely. So here we are literally priming the damper by activating it up and down until we can feel resistance within the damper rod where it sucked the new fluid in and you can hear the air has stopped coming out.
So it can take quite a while, but just be patient and continually pump the damper rod until you're sure there's no more air escape and you'll hear the noise it stops making. And you'll also feel resistance within the damper shaft up and down. Whereas when you first start doing it with the air in there, it will be quite easy to move. So once you're at that point, your damper's all primed and bled up. Now we are ready to check the oil heights in the fork leg. So there's a few things to be aware of when you're checking the fork oil heights. The spring needs to be removed out of the fork. Your outer tube needs to be completely compressed and obviously your damper bled up. Now there's a few ways we can check the level of this oil height in here. Uh, the basic, most basic simple method is to use a steel rule. Slide it down the inside and as you see the oil on there, take the measurement to the inner fork, top of the inner fork leg and you will be able to work out your oil level. Uh, if you want to go a stage further and be a bit more accurate, you can use a digital vernier gauge sat on the corner of the inner fork leg and again lower the vernier gauge down until it touches the oil level and get your reading from the gauge. Or you, if you've got a syringe or something like this, you can actually set the length of the pipe on the end of it to 100 mil or 110 or whatever fork oil height you want, trim it off, then you can just sit your syringe on the edge of the fork leg and pull any excess oil out until it stops sucking it out. So we're gonna use the vernier gauge because the syringe has got a flexible hose in it, not a solid one, so we're not gonna get an accurate measurement. So we're gonna use this method today. So here we can see the fork oil level, hopefully. We pop this down. Just as it starts to touch the oil. There. We have got a reading of 85.4 millimeters. So we are looking for 100 mil, so we've got too much oil in there at the minute. We are going down, we're going up to 100 mil to increase the air gap with the lighter oils, try and give a better feeling, slightly softer suspension. So we are gonna use a syringe and suck out a small amount of oil. And then we can give it another measurement. So now we're at 118.1 mil, so we've gone too far the other way. So we'll drop a little bit back in and see how accurate we can get it. Hundred and six point three, tiny little bit out, and we'll be there. Obviously, it is a lot easier if you've got a syringe with the right length on it straight away so you can just get the exact measurement. So that is something I'm gonna look at fitting on this at a later date. Hopefully the final measurement. Ninety-nine point one eight millimeters. That is close enough for me. So we now know that we have got a hundred mil a hundred millimeters fork oil height. Damper rods bed up, seals are on, we just need to reassemble the fork. So the fork leg is now set back up into the spring compressor contraption. Again, cable tied in the bottom to hold it in. This is where it becomes a little bit trickier with this Mark I version. So what we ideally need to do is weld these nuts on the outside. As we've now got the outer tube on, the inside lock nuts tend to catch a little bit on the tube so we can't compress it as far down as what we'd really like. Uh, this has also had a little modification here with this um, cable tie ladder. So hopefully the idea of this being that I can use my foot to free up both hands to do this whilst trying to film and compress the spring and get the top cap on. So let's see how it goes. So the first job is to slip the spring in nice and gently to stop any oil flowing over, making sure the orientation of the spring is correct in case it is a progressively wound spring. And we need to drop in our preload spacer and get our fittings secure in there. So 
So here we are. All the fixings are in. Now we can compress the fork spring. Now it's a simple case of trying to pull the damper rod through and secure the top cap. Compress the fork spring, hold it down. This really is where the damper rod tool will come into its own for now putting the damper rod back up ready for the top cap, but we'll just have to try and carefully find it with these long nose pliers. There it is. You can pop that 10mm span underneath just to hold it. Obviously not forgetting our little shim spacer. And starting our top cap. All that's left now is to Lock it off. Clip it up. Put our 10 mil off. Spacer in the correct orientation and gently release the spring tension settling everything back down. So a little bit of a faff there guys, but it's all in, it's all together, it's all nipped up, we've got the top cap on, everything set up properly, now all we need to do is re-secure the top cap into the fork leg and we can pop that back in the wheel chock just to nip it up. And there we have it, one fork leg all ready to be put back in the bike. This has just been nipped up. A few little bits and pieces that I might change for the future modifications to the tools and certainly buying a tool to screw on the damper rod to bleed it and to lift it up. But this is the first time I've used that homemade tool. So very, very pleased with how it's gone. No damage to the fork at all, new seals, new oil, different weight modification and different air gap in there. Let's get them back in the bike, set the preload up for Bob and let's see what he thinks of them. Here we can see she's a nice smooth operator. If we actually have a look at this fork leg we can see where it's slightly shinier at the top end of the fork leg there you can see it's only been using this amount of travel. So what we need to try and do is get this suspension leg using the full range of travel. Another key point to just quickly mention is these forks are identical left and right. We've got preload and rebound at the top, compression at the bottom. Some fork legs will have rebound in one side, compression in the other, and both with springs and preload. So it's just something to be aware of uh, before you strip them apart. Exactly the same operation, removing the spring damper rod, etc. So there we go, another job complete. Uh, forks are ready to go back in the bike. Just got to pop them in and set the preload up and let Bob take it out for a test ride and see what sort of difference he thinks there is. Um, if there are any arachnids out there watching this video, if you could just drop a comment below, just letting me know whether you do actually just complete one fork leg at a time or whether you do four, uh, just out of interest, seeing as you've got eight legs. Um, so yeah, hope you've uh, enjoyed the video, bit of entertainment, maybe learnt something. Time to drink some whiskey. Ta-ta!